Hey, it's time for a voiceover body shop. And our guest this week is the amazing expert on your websites. Joe Davis, wave. We want your questions. We want your URLs. We want to look at your websites, too. So join us now for VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey, we're live. For those of you watching live, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO BS. All right. Well, tonight our guest is Joe Davis. We want to talk about voice actor websites. And I'm sure every time Joe's on here, it's becoming an annual tradition, actually, because yes, well, you guys just drove back from Vegas together. Yes, from Wovocon, which yeah. was fabulous. We had I'm a sure it great was. time. It was well organized, and the audiovisual stuff was perfect because it was me running around <laughs> plugging and unplugging everything, and uh, isn't that playing fun? musical projectors and, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But uh, your voice sounds a little worse, a little worse for the wear. Well, see, that's the thing when you go to a voiceover conference, and we've said this before. You got to use your indoor voice. Yeah, not easy, uh, is it? Otherwise, you're out of business for a couple of days as a voice actor. So, uh, was there any karaoke? -ing? There was. And did you sing any? I did. Oh. I did my traditional hit me with your rhythm stick, <laughs> which only, fortunately, only a few people got to witness. Oh. But, uh, but they at least gloried and reveled in it. Anyway, <laughs> um, and you're back after a long absence. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, absent, but not, you know, no, yeah, where you were remote, here, but... remoted in two different, uh, shows. Um, yeah, that was, I came in today. I was like, what is different about this place? Oh, I'm here. That's, what's <laughs> that's different. what's different. It was weird. Absolutely. But yeah, it's good to be back in the studio in the flesh and it's much, way more fun this way. Excellent. Well, it's time to introduce our guest. I think he actually holds the record for being on our show the most. He might, he aside, might, aside time. from you and me. He's officially a friend uh, of the show. Yes, you know, and and a sponsor, by the way. But that has nothing to do with it. The fact of the matter is, he is the guru, the master of websites for voice actors, and yeah. he is the owner of VoiceActorWebsites.com and an expert in SEO and all sorts of stuff that you guys always ask about. Let's welcome back Joe Davis. Yay, hey, Joe. Come on in. Gracefully duck under the yeah, microphone. Get in there. Thank and you. Duck the mics. Do the and limbo and your end. Welcome back, sir. Good to see you after the last 10 minutes. It's true. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you, George. In two days. Are you well rested? Like Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I just had to wake him up. <laughs> That's true. I passed that on the couch. <laughs> wake up. All righty. So uh, if you've got questions for Joe about you know your website because boy people just ask lots of questions and you did a great presentation this weekend it thank was, you it was a lot of fun and the place was packed everybody's like what's he say what's he say anyway but how did you get into the website business because oh, you're not a voice actor so that's true although i play one sometimes okay 
on uh, voiceover shows. Uh, so I I started actually probably when I was I don't know eleven or twelve before the the internet had graphics. Uh, my father was a professor at the university, and I had access to the uh, the computers that nobody else did. And so I started tinkering with them and creating stuff that I thought was fun. And eventually, I created a website which was for back then I I still played video games, and uh, I, I created a, a website for a video game that I played. And I put up the moves and that kind of thing. And eventually, um, it got so popular that the creators of the game came and chatted with their fans on there. And I put up some ads and started making money. And then people started approaching me and saying, hey, uh, can you do our websites? And then I went to college, did it on the side, and uh, then finished college, worked for a nonprofit, which is how we met. 15 years ago or so. Yeah. And uh, and then you got me involved in the voiceover industry, and the rest is history. See, that was my next question. How'd you get involved in voice acting stuff? <laughs> That's his fault. Yeah, so, completely. Um, Dan told me about this wonderful world of voice actors and warned me never to get involved. And I, I luckily did not take his advice. <laughs> yeah, really. And he trained me himself. And I've spent the last close to probably eight years in, in um, VO. Doing websites, marketing, branding. Um, we even do some casting now, and uh, that was a, a happy accident. Uh, we basically we started getting contacted by companies who said, "Hey, you work with a lot of voice actors. Do you know someone who could fill in the blank?" And then we started working with agents and doing their websites. And they said, "You work with a lot of voice actors. Do you know someone who can fill in the blank?" <laughs> and so it's just one of those win wins. Yeah. When really? a business grows organically out of necessity, that's how mine came together too. Just people were going. Nobody's doing this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should do that. Yeah. And now it's really important because you have to have a website if you're a voice actor. Otherwise, you really can't be one. Why is it so important for someone to have a website as a voice actor? Yeah, why not just well, Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to throw me an easy question? <laughs> so uh, as a voice actor, you need a place for someone to be able to hear you and hire you. And if you are using a pay-to-play profile or social media, you're essentially sending a potential client to a place where there are thousands or tens of thousands of people that do what you do mm -hmm. and have the opportunity to be distracted, at the very least. So um, I, I think the, the reason there is obvious, but um, larger than that, a, a website can serve multiple purposes. It can be an extension of a business card where you have some sort of interaction with someone and you're sending them there to listen to your demo, to see who your clients are, to watch a video that you did the VO for, um, and whatever else you want to inform them of, and then ideally engage them, either for a job or longer term as someone who's interested in what you write about. Uh, Paul Strickwater is a great example of that. Dave oh, yeah. Corvassier also. And um, it, it's a, a great way to keep both the industry informed, if, if you're writing things for voice talent, and or um, people who are hiring talent, which is a, a big issue now, you know, people who are hiring talent may never have hired talent before. Be before the process went through agents and casting directors and production companies, and, and now you have people who are working directly with talent and don't know how to hire talent or what a fair rate is. And so I think as, as talent, um, there's a lot you can do to educate the buyer. Yeah. So what are some of the important elements someone needs to have in their website? Uh, well, demo. Yeah, um, and, and it depends, you have to define your goals. Right. So uh, a website that is the extension of a business card where um, the, the question is, what is important to have for the talent seeker is sort of a different question than what do I need for a website that is satisfying a search engine like Google and is helping people find me that don't already know me. So they're not looking for Joe Davis or Dan Leonard. They're looking for a male voice actor of this age that does this type of VO. Right. And so I'll answer the, the, the first question first, which makes more sense than answering the second question first. Uh, that's the sleep talking, <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> so the, the extension of the business card, the demo is front and center. It has to be. Um, that's what they're hiring you for, right? For your voice. And you want them to hear you. I sometimes get people who approach me and say, hey, I need a website. And I say, great, what type of VO do you do? And send me your demo, let me hear it. And they say, I don't have a demo. And I, I'm always surprised by that because what are you selling? You know. And so I, at that point, we often say, all right, 
why don't you reach out to WOVO, to World of Voices organization, and learn about VO? Why don't you read VoiceOver Extra? Um, get involved in the industry. Start the, the conversation on Facebook of what is VoiceOver and, and how do I get involved? But you're, you're not ready for a website yet. So demo playable and downloadable. So, so important. There are casting directors, agents, producers who want to save your demo on their computer and listen to it later if they like you, or a week later, or a month later, or save you for that job that they don't have yet, but they think you'd be perfect for. And if you can't save your demo, you, you might be out of the running for that. Mm. When you make your demo downloadable, make sure you put your name on it. Because how do a lot of people label their demo? Commercial demo.mp3. Oh boy. Corporate narration demo.mp3. Great. Idea. So it's <laughs> seven hours later or um, three weeks later, and who is this person? Exactly. So make sure you put your name in the file name and also in the metadata if you can. An email address and website, not in the file name, but in the, the metadata. Maybe what do you mean by metadata? Yeah. Sometimes that just goes oh, right over people's head. Right. Good question. So I can speak to it, but um, you could actually speak to it probably better on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Metadata is information that is embedded into the audio file. Mm -hmm. So when it's opened in a player, it actually appears on the screen. And so you can put in various different things. Um, the process is different depending on the software you're using. Yeah, like in right. Pro Tools and Audacity, when you save an MP3, it, it, it gives you prompts you. Yeah. In Twisted Wave, you have to you have to actually go into another thing to edit it. But yeah, it, it's going to ask you like name, or, you know, artist, title, all these things that may not be rel relevant. But the more information you put in there, the better, right? For for a demo, yeah. At least you don't, have to do it, you don't have to do it for auditions, but demos for sure. Absolutely. And um, I often I'm glad you mentioned artist because I I often check this and the demo producer's name often ends up in that field when I get mm. the, the MP3. Oh, okay. And so, uh, because people will get the, the demo from the demo producer, and somehow it gets, um, because of their software, it gets, somehow. Plug <laughs> it gets plugged into there. <laughs> so make sure you're checking those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so demo, super, super important. And then contact information, the ability to hire you. I, the more, the better, in my opinion. So phone number, email address, contact form. Contact forms are... I think a good idea for a couple of reasons. One is many people now don't use Outlook or an, an email program. They use Gmail or G Suite or Office 365, where it's a, a web-based thing. And so when you're you're clicking on an email address on a website, what happens? It, it pops open. The, sorry, go ahead. Apple Mail or right. whatever. Yeah. And it says, ah, it's, I don't use that. Right, ah. it's not configured. Please configure. Right. Ah, X, X, get me out of here. Yeah. So Annoyance. Um, you want to give people the option to email you, but you also want to give them a contact form where they say, okay, my name is this, my email is this, this is what I want, boom. And mm -hmm. I, I was just at a, another voiceover conference about a month ago, and a, a casting director said, you have three seconds to get my attention. <sighs> three seconds with the website, three seconds with the demo, and three seconds with contacting you. And if I can't do each of those things in about three seconds, I'm out. I, I don't know if that's industry standard or not, but I think it's a, an important lesson that you have a, a very limited window. And, and the more you know, millennial producers you have, probably the- The, the shorter the, the attention span. <laughs> yes, right. exactly. So Nothing against millennials. No, I'm sort of almost one. No, you're not no, quite. No. <laughs> I, um, so I, we, we covered demo and contact and really, again, those are the two most important things. I think having a bio gives someone a taste of who you are as a talent, maybe a, a reason to, to connect with you on a personal level. So, oh, they're a dancer. I'm a dancer. Oh, they have a, a background as a teacher. I loved my teacher in middle school, whatever it is, you're, you're giving them a reason to personally identify with you, uh, client logos, uh, client list. That's kind of like um, Amazon, where you're you're buying something and there are five gold stars and positive reviews, right. and you know you know that this you're actually not the first person who's buying this product or service, and so testimonials, same thing. Um, on the testimonial side, I know some people have had issues with other uh, voice actors going after their contacts, and so. If, if you're concerned about that, I would say just put the first name of the, the person and then the last initial and maybe the, the company that they're from or just the company, and that can prevent against that. Um, having a uh, delivery methods area. So if you have ISDN, IPDTL, Source Connect, by all means, tell clients that. And I guess even if you don't, you know, you can buy day passes on some of these things. Mm -hmm. So you, you shouldn't say, I have IPDTL or Source Connect, but you can say available via and then right. you can buy a day pass. Right. 
Excellent, excellent point. Now, George and I are always talking about, you know, with your audio, mm-hmm. the idea is not to sound great. The idea is to not sound bad. <laughs> and I'm sure that the it that rules true with, with websites as well, because you don't want to look bad. What are some things you do not want to do with your website? Um, lots of things on your site that don't have to do with you as a voice actor. So I, I know people that are, a lot of people are concerned with creating a brand, and legitimately so. But a brand should reflect who you are, not this perfect version of you. Um, and, and the same thing is true of audio, right? If you, if you sound different in your auditions than you do in your demos, that's going to be a problem. So it should reflect you. It should be relevant. Uh, and you, it shouldn't take over the, the website. So uh, demos above the fold is i'd say really really important definitely on the the front page making someone hunt for your demos by putting them on an internal page and it's great to have internal pages it's good for seo and we'll talk about that but um just having no demos on your home page at all i think is a a big mistake so putting lots of imagery things that make the the site load fast people will um sometimes put videos in the background and that's auto playing and that makes a, a website load so much slower and again, with attention spans and um, people looking at things on mobile, they're going to leave quickly. Auto playing audio, never, never do. So how many times have you hit a website and it blared over the speakers or you're, you know, yeah. you're waiting in line at the, the uh, DMV or the dentist and your phone starts screaming right. and you're, you're Xing out. So never have auto playing audio. Uh, don't give people the opportunity to go somewhere else and be distracted. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have video on on YouTube. Don't send them to YouTube to watch it, embed it on your site. Because what happens? You go to YouTube, you you watch that video, and then it says, oh, you watched this, so you must also like X, Y, and Z. Yeah, the recommendation engine. Exactly. And then 20 minutes later, you're down the rabbit hole because you watched the funny kitten video, which led you to the Stegosaurus costume, uh, which led you to the Tyrannosaurus Rex fight at Uncle Roy's barbecue, yeah. and so forth. some Russian disaster with a crane, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Love those videos; those are fun. Uh, once again, our we're, our guest here on Voiceover Body Shop is Joe Davis. Uh, he is the president, CEO, and lord and master of VoiceActorWebsites dot com, which is the only place that really does stuff specifically for voice actors. Right. I, I, I have nothing to add to that. That was quite a, a list. Thank oh, you. All right. Well, there's a lot of, I don't understand any of this stuff, which is why you do it. And, you know, and you seem to do it until like two in the morning, Pacific <laughs> time, and you're in Florida. It's, right. Um, but there's lots of different terminology that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, like title tags in keywords. What's that all about? So title tags, when you do a, a Google search for something, and there's a, a blue line that you can click on in the results, and it says, you know, Dan Leonard, Home Studio Master. And you can click on that, and it takes you to the website. That is the, the title tag for that particular page. Every page on your website has a distinct title tag, meaning it's different. And it's also what appears when you bookmark a site, and in the, the very top of the browser above the address bar in that little narrow window... Um, but the reason that it's important, aside from just that you want to convince a human being to click on your site when they see it in Google, is that a search engine generally attributes more weight to the words that appear there. So if you want to rank well for male corporate narration and you don't have that in your title tag, it's not a, a, a you know um, silver bullet where it's going to um, solve all of your SEO problems. But if you don't have it there, you, there's a darn good chance that you're not going to rank for it. If you do, and then you follow all the other different things, then there's a good chance that you will. So it, it's a, a pretty basic thing that you can do to give yourself a nice boost. And depending on the platform that you're using, um, it, there's a different process for doing it, but it's always simple to set a, a title tag. And so if you're using WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, um, any of those platforms, you can just Google how to set a, a title tag, meta title tag or description, and um, there'll be an answer there. Or you can send me an email. I'm happy to tell you in WordPress, I would recommend installing the plugin Yoast and Y O A S T, and it gives you all kinds of additional functionality in WordPress, including 
setting your title tags and descriptions. And the description is what appears below that, that title tag in a search result. So it's the description of that particular page. And when you do a search and the, the pages come up, you'll see that there are words that get bolded in the description, and that's what's triggering the result to show. So um, some basic SEO stuff that helps convince humans to click on your site and satisfies some of those keyword requirements from Google and the other search engines. And just to be clear, it shouldn't be a list of keywords. So it's not like mail, warm, conversational, blah, blah, blah. It's you want it to, to make sense. It should be something that, that captures someone atten so, someone's attention, excuse me, and um, has the right keywords in there. And that goes for the title tag and description. Yeah. I mean, that that's the thing, though, is you're competing against thousands and thousands of other voice actors. Are people going to find you by doing a simple voice actor search? What's going to ref what's going to get them, you know, what is it in your website that's going to get somebody to find you before somebody else with a very wide search? Good question. Well, if they search just for voice actor, they actually will find us um, because <laughs> well, voice actor websites comes up on the first page of Google for that search. But uh, I would say if you look at the, the search landscape as the, the broader you go, the more searches there are, but the more competitive it is. And then you start thinking about what is my niche? What do people hire me for? What are the, the things that people would be searching for? Um, and, and that's called long tailed search when you're not just saying voice actor, but maybe you're looking for um, audiobook narrator, warm conversational, you know, that's a, a longer search term. And those longer search terms are generally easier to rank for. There's much less search for them, but if you can own a lot of those or even a few lucrative ones, then it's a, a great way to get started in the SEO game. So if you've been doing this for a while, if you have a lot of great content, a large website or a budget to spend on SEO, then going after some of those more competitive terms may make sense. If not, then those long tailed ones can be um, low hanging fruit. And actually there's a tool that we use all the time. It, there's, it costs um, to use it. There's a monthly fee. I think it starts at something like $150 a month and goes up from there. But um, just this past week, they actually released a free version of it. And it's, it's not the, the, the full version, but it has a lot of the functionality in it. Uh, it's actually on our site now on the, the voiceover body shop page. And it's called the, the Moz um, domain analysis tool. And it will tell you things like your domain authority. Domain authority is a logarithmic scale from zero to 100. And the higher your website ranks as a number, the more powerful it is. So, um, but it's also more difficult to go higher the higher the number is. So if you're a five, it's easier to go to a six than it is from a six to a seven and so on and so forth. But um, that tool's a, a great way to, to kind of get started analyzing where your SEO is and where there might be opportunity because it'll tell you a list of the keywords that your site ranks in the first five pages of Google. So most people are not going past the first page, right? But let's say you're on page two or three or four. So you're probably not getting traffic for that keyword, but with a little bit of work, you might pop to the first page right. and then be able to start getting traffic from it. So um, starting with a tool like that, seeing where you are now will help you define where the, the landscape is and where you may be able to go. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Right. Our guest is Joe Davis. Once again, if you've got a question for Joe, probably stuff that I wouldn't know to ask because some of you are real geeky about your websites and stuff and maybe know HTML and all this programming language and stuff. But uh, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room, either in Facebook or over on our website in our, in our chat room there, and we will get to that. Also, we'd like your homepage, your voice actor website page, so maybe we can take a look at it and see what Joe thinks of it. And uh, we would love to hear from you from that. So you can give us your, your URLs, uh, and we will look at those as well. Uh, so you're talking about a lot of stuff. When I started in voice acting, I was told there would be no math. <laughs> 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 and I think to a lot of people, they're, you know, you're, you start talking about, well, this and this, and you rank, and, you, and they're all going, ah. <laughs> why so, better to hire somebody who knows this stuff you know if, if you have the, the ability or the time to do it yourself by all means do it if you don't we certainly can do it or um, a, a trained professional can do it 
but I, I think a, a lot of it, when you take out the technical part, it's common sense. And so um, think about what a searcher's intent is. What are they trying to find and how are they trying to find it? And then crafting your site in a logical way to answer that question. So does your title tag match your H1 tag? And an H1 tag is a, a heading tag on your, your page. Um, does your H1 tag and your, your title tag support the content that's below it? Does the content link to other content that makes sense? Or does other content link to that that makes sense? Do you have images that support that content and have alt tags? And alt tags are a, uh, I'm trying not to use jargon, but you know, there's, there's no other way to say it. There's jargon and there's jargon. Right. So uh, an alt tag stands for alternative text. And that is a, a way of essentially labeling an image so that that text does not appear on the front end. The, the user doesn't see it. But the engine but, sees it and says, oh, this is a picture of this. Exactly. What also you, makes your site accessible. Well, that's where, why it was created. <laughs> screen reader will yep. read out a picture of a flower or something like that. It was originally, <laughs> you're absolutely right. It was originally <clears throat> created, that tag, to help people who are visually impaired understand images on a page. And so a screen reader would read that out. Google who couldn't see images said, oh, this is a great opportunity for us to identify what a, an image is. And so it became a, a tool in the SEO arsenal. Um, mm -hmm. What's interesting is that Google's knowledge of graphics and how to use OCR, which is optical character recognition, basically a way of scanning an image and understanding what's in it, has grown tremendously. <clears throat> and that's actually thanks to all of us. So, oh, good. Because <laughs> of all the pictures we post and... Um, or it had to do with the captcha thing too. Exactly, it yes. has to do with the captcha. The captcha. So click all the squares with a school bus in it. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. And or now do the ones with bicycles. <laughs> and now the ones with traffic lights. <laughs> or on buses. And on and on and on yeah. and on. <laughs> crosswalks. That's one of my favorite crosswalks. I don't see a crosswalk there. <laughs> so what you're doing uh, is you're training Google's AI to understand images. The, the only problem with that is, if Google doesn't know what those images are, you could lie, right? and then the AI wouldn't work. And um, you're also preventing spam because you're, you know, if a, a robot can't tell what a fire hydrant is or a school bus, then it, it's not clicking the right images. But if you can lie and say what are not the right images, then the system wouldn't learn correctly, right? Yeah. So Google's smart, obviously, and they know what two of those images are already. Mm -hmm. But okay. one of them they don't. Okay. And so if you get the two right, they're going to assume that you got the third one right. Oh. And they're going to run it by 100 other people. And if 100 other people confirm what you did, or 97 of them do, then they're going to say, okay, this is also a fire hydrant. So wow. that's how the system works. And they crowdsource their training. They could hire people to do this, but then they'd have to pay people to sit right. there literally all day and click images. Instead, they have all of us do it. So their, their AI crazy. on images has gotten a lot better. Yeah. So there's not somebody there monitoring it. It's... Big Brother is doing this. Yep. And and interestingly enough, it's sort of the same thing with audio. So um, the speech-to-text systems out there and the speech recognition systems out there, most of them are not as good at uh, actually understanding the text or the, the audio as Google's. And that's because of tools like Google Voice, which I actually recommend voice actors use because we're all small businesses, right? And as a small business, it may be cost prohibitive to have a, an extra line or um, just a pain in the neck to have to pay for a, another cell phone. And so what you can do is you can go to google.com slash voice and sign up for a free phone number. And it'll basically forward to whatever you want, your landline, your cell phone, or, or something else. And you can have a, a custom voicemail for it. And this way you can put a phone number on your website, on your business card, and you're not giving out your personal cell phone number. But you should be aware that Google is recording all of those conversations. And so, again, they could pay people. Like, there's a, a company called Dragon, which was one of the leading speech recognition mm -hmm. technology companies. And they had to pay people to train their system. And the systems get better the more voices that they hear. So you can pay 10,000 people to train your system, or you can release, release a product for free, like Google Voice, and have millions of people train your system for free. Wow. And so, um, you know, if you're having classified conversations, I probably wouldn't use it. But for everyday voiceover business, it's yeah. a good tool. <laughs> Fascinating. Well, George, you're looking like the operator at a telethon over there. Uh, I, I have a feeling we're getting a lot of questions from our vast audience, are we not? 
There are. We've gotten so far one uh, link for a website. All right. Evaluation. Come on, one don't brave, be a chicken. One brave soul so far. Um, that's coming. I, I have just a question because it's been buzzing in my head. What sure. does markdown mean? Markdown. Markdown. Mark up comes, or markdown? Wasn't well, there a markdown for doing web coding? A markdown or, a, or no, mark, it's mark up? up. Mark up. Oh, mark it's mark up. up. Markdown. <sighs> like like with regular <laughs> graphics. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you had stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> so markup. What is what is markup? Um, so there, well, I'm wondering if there is a markdown that I just don't know about. In the context, I always see it like, uh, when I'm on Squarespace, it says you can view this as, uh, you can view it as a WYSIWYG. You can view it as you are as web, um, as you are, uh, what I'm or saying, HTML, HTML, yeah. HTML yeah. or you can view it, view it as markup or markdown. I can't remember which one it is. Okay. So, well, WYSIWYG is what, um, what you see is what you get. It's right. a, a visual drag and drop. It's mostly what I use. Yeah. HTML markup is generally the code and so i think that's what you're referring yeah, to that's what i mean so but there's the code right. so that's basically looking at the, the actual code of how something's created many website builders out there create the code for you so you you drag yeah. you click you do and then the code's written on the back end you never have to look at it right you never have to do the math mm -hmm. but if right. you Thank want God. to if you want to make some sort of custom edit and you know how you can look at the html markup Got it's it. possible that there's a markup down now that I'm just not aware of. So okay. I will Google that later. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right. We'll tell you what. We're going to get to your questions in just a minute and take a look at your websites. Come on, send us your URLs. We want to see those. Uh, but we're going to take a break right now. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Joe Davis from Voice Actor Websites. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. I know. <laughs> She's got her voice on. Hey, what question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take VO Hero's free getting started in VO class. You heard right. It's free. It's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching our show and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need, all in one single comprehensive online class Taught by VoiceOver Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. As a, As a voice, voice talent, talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. 
We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice Over Body Shop. Thank you, Anthony Mendez. Yes, we're back with Joe Davis, and we got lots of questions. Guys, just... Guys, eat this stuff up. We, maybe we should just make you, like, here every week. Um, <laughs> I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Maybe you need to do your own show. That might be something to do <laughs> exactly. with, uh, with, with more career success. With all my free time. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, George, who has questions here? All right, starting with questions. Um, this Go to the second one here. A little ways ago. Yeah. This one here? Yeah, that Greg one there. From Greg. From Greg Thomas. Uh, here's a question for Joe. Given how much money VDC One Two Three and all the other big online casting sites spend on SEO, how many hundreds of VO talent use the keyword voiceover on their websites? And uh, and considering how many people are using that on their websites, is it really possible for small entrepreneurs who don't have huge SEO budgets to post on the first page of Google? It's a so, how do you do that? <laughs> so it's an excellent question. <laughs> and I, I have a, a few things to say um, before I even answer the question. One is, I see that it was written as voiceover one word. There's actually between 10 to 40 times the amount of search for with a space as opposed to without a space. So if you're doing a, your optimization, I would do it for voiceover with a space and not without a space. Oh. So just a, a little trick for you. And never a hyphen. Um, and there's mm. there's not nearly as much for a hyphen. So yeah. the, there's more search for with a space with, than without a space, then um, I think without a space, then with a space, and then hyphenated. So, I think that makes sense because we think of voiceover. We, if, to us, it's it's just, it's jargon, like it's voiceover. Mm -hmm. So we've run it together. But to the layman, to the VO most of the yeah, time, yeah, to the layman, two words, voiceover, probably makes more sense. And I mean, that's, maybe that's my theory. I don't know. Well, and I think that goes back to understanding what the talent seeker is looking for, right. you know, getting inside their head, talking to the people that hire you and saying, what are you searching for and how are you searching? And, and this way you're, you're targeting the right things. Yeah. Um, now to the, to the meat of the question. So yes, they have large budgets, but they also, I think, have the, the challenges of being huge marketplaces, which are... They're generalists. You know, right. Exactly. They're looking for every single possible search. Yeah. And you can target. Yeah. Bingo. So the the more focused you can be on a specific thing, the, the better the chances. If you have a website about voiceover and someone's searching for automotive commercial voiceover, is it related? Yeah. But could it be more specific, more related? Absolutely. Yeah. So then let's say you have a page dedicated or section dedicated to each one of the types of voiceover that you do. So a page for commercial, a page for narration, a page for e-learning, and so on. Which you would recommend. Which I would recommend, Separate yes. pages for each genre. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you want text on those pages. So it's kind of counterintuitive for a voice actor because mm -hmm. you want people to listen to your voice or watch a video right. with your voice on there, right? Right. But you need text. SEO is all about good quality text content. That's what Google is basing a huge amount of its... Um, ranking off of say no to flash websites kids oh gosh that's <laughs> flash if you still have a flash website you you better uh change it into flash move on yes <laughs> comes in sideways or... <laughs> yeah 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 um the, nothing in the in the flash can be seen by google so yeah. that, that's the, probably the single worst thing you could do to um have a, a site in flash not only from an seo perspective anymore but because uh, a lot of modern phones and browsers just won't play it, they'll block mm -hmm. it. So you're going to get a big empty square or rectangle. And that's an important thing too, is it's got to be mobile friendly as well. That's like essential because I think Google's like, that's what they're looking for more now. Isn't yes. It? Yep. And I'll, I'll jump to that after okay. I, I finish his question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
if you have a, a page for each one of the genres that you do, so you have that commercial page, and Google looks at that and this says, okay, it's about voice over the site, it's about um, commercial, but this person's specifically looking for automotive. Now you have that you, uh, tertiary level that you add to your website, which has one for pharmaceutical commercials. Tertiary. Yes, I didn't say tushy, I said tertiary. Tertiary. Uh, so <laughs> you have the... Um, the pharmaceutical commercial page and the kids commercial page and the automotive commercial page. Google looks at that and says, wow, it's about voiceover. It's about commercial and it's about automotive. And it becomes the most relevant result on the internet to that searcher's intent. And so as individual talent, I think you have that flexibility that these huge marketplaces don't. Uh, if you search for female voiceover talent, so four words in Google, you'll see Probably, depending on where you are in the country, probably Debbie Gratton, um, Melissa Exelberth, Jody Krangel, Laura Schreiber, and um, uh, I think one or two other talent on the first page, many of them beating the, the large marketplaces. And I could give other search terms too, where you have individual talent that are beating the big play-to-plays in the voiceover game. Um, many of them we work with, and, uh, but you certainly can get there on your own too. Um, so I, I think it, it's a legitimate question. and. It is also certainly possible, and the, the proof is in the pudding, by simply doing those searches and seeing the people that are beating them. Mm. Now, awesome. the, uh, the mobile responsive question, mm. yeah, so that's a super big one, because last year, Google moved to a mobile-first index, meaning that it used to be having a mobile option was nice. Then Google said, if you don't have a, a mobile option, um, it, it might hurt your ranking. And then... They said the calculation of your website's ranking is no longer going to be based on the desktop version. It's based on the mobile version. That would mean my 10-year-old Squarespace 5 website is completely invisible <laughs> on Google. I better do something about that. So, Holy crap. That's so it, it's, it's actually become extremely important. And, you yeah. know, um, I, I know... People who will say, oh, you know, I'll have a block of text, but then on mobile, I'll hide it because I want it to, um, to be a, a small, succinct website, which is nice, but um, that means that Google can't uh, use that text for ranking because it's not appearing on the mobile version. So mm. anything that you are building with SEO in mind, mm -hmm. it needs to be mobile responsive and all that content needs to be visible on mobile. And it's just another reason why demos above the fold, meaning um, that first screen that you hit when you see a site. Mm -hmm. are so important because on mobile, if you have a, a long scroll and your demos are halfway down the page, then it, people are going to bail. They're going to say, I can't find it. I'm going to go. If you think about a, a person that's hiring talent, they're usually not looking at one person's website, right? They're looking at yeah. 10, 20, 50, 100. And if you add a minute to their day by looking at your website, multiply that by 50, 60 people, and you've just added an hour to their day. Two minutes, two hours. And so um, their mindset is they want in, listen, and out. Yeah. So yes, yeah, mobile responsive. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mandy K says, "Do you have good resources for building your brand as a voice actor? I'm struggling with beginning things like describing my voice, writing the bio, etc." I I think mm. you can. So you can certainly hire a professional to do that, um, but the professional probably won't know you as well as your family and friends. And so you, you have a built-in network. And I would email them a list of questions, say, what are three things that you think of when you hear my voice? Um, would you describe me as what? When I talk to you, what feeling do you get? You can, you know, you can do things like color or whatever too, but um, crowdsourcing that to the people that know you and are willing to answer that question for free, I think will go a long way to helping you figure out who you are as a talent. And you can do it with your demo. You can just do it with people that have talked to you. And so um, that that's certainly part of it. Our, I think coming out of the, the box with too strong a brand as a voice talent, eventually a brand is important, but in the beginning, it can position you in a way that is not best for your career. Mm. So you don't know who you are as a talent yet. And I think the only way to really understand that is start seeing what type of work you book and um, mm. see the, the, the types of spots, the, the genres and the types of spots that you book. 
and that will help a lot. So there's nothing wrong with having a brand in the beginning, but worrying about it too much and never launching your career because of it, I think is a, a mistake. And so I would say focus more on having something that's professional to show to the world and then worry about the brand later because it will the brand will inform you who you are naturally and you won't have to struggle with it. But um, if you want some some tools or some exercises that you can ask friends about, by all means, email me, joe at voiceactorwebsites.com or just go to the website and click on the contact form and I'll send you some free resources on it. Very what a good. Guy. Something from our good buddy, Paul Strickwitter. Yeah, how about that? Hey, Paul. <clears throat> um, what should we look for in a web hosting service? Uh, which ones should we actually avoid? Is it okay to put logos of companies on websites or could we get into legal trouble? So a couple mm -hmm. questions yeah. chained together there. Yeah, so... Um, I'm, so I'm glad that spot for Nike. Should you put a Nike <laughs> logo on your website? Let me preface this with, I'm not a lawyer. Mm. Um, however, I have spoken to lawyers about it and it's my understanding that there's a, a form of fair use where as long as you're not representing yourself as the company, you can utilize it on something. But if they ask you to take it down, you should do it. So, um, I, I don't think any company is going to give you, uh, who's is going to actually sue you for putting up a logo. They might send you a cease and desist. And you, if you fought it, you might win. Is it worth it? No. So <laughs> if you use it, I think it's fine. If they send you a letter, take it down. And again, just make sure that you're not representing yourself as that company. You can say, um, you know, worked with happy clients, that kind of thing. Yeah, like don't and, theme your entire website after Nike, yeah. <laughs> using the same color scheme as Nike and have a giant swoosh logo as the background of your website. Yeah, I disagree. I disagree. Just do it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, he also said, "What should you look for in a? What should you look for in a web hosting service?" Uh, that depends partially on you. So, are you looking for really good customer service? I, personally, I I do want that. I want to be able to call someone and get what I need super fast. Do you? Um, but some people may not care about that. Mm -hmm. You you want the the service to have fast servers. Um, generally be located in the target market that you're going after. So if you're going after the U.S. market, I would go after a, I would use a, a company that's based in the United States. Mm -hmm. if, if you're just targeting one market like L.A. Or, or New York, then I would even recommend having a company that has servers in that place. Wow. Mm. But um, in general, I would say definitely be in the country that you want to target. Uh, SSL. So SSL stands um, for Secure Socket Layer, and it's the HTTPS. So when you look at a website and it says secure and you get the little lock, that is the SSL. Now, we're not selling anything. Right? Well, we're selling our voice, but you're not making a purchase on the website in general. It's a place where they're contacting you, sending you an audition, you send them an invoice, et cetera, et cetera. So why is SSL important? It's probably not from a business standpoint, except for the fact that now they're scaring people by saying your website's insecure if you don't <laughs> yeah, have it. I'm seeing uh, that now. <laughs> but it is important from an SEO perspective because Google says, if you have it, it'll help your SEO. If you don't have it, it'll hurt it. Mm. And so, um, again, SSL is not one of those things that gonna, is going to make or break your SEO, but each one of these check marks that you check off helps it. And cumulatively, you can have a, a quite powerful site. So SSL is definitely something... Um, most websites nowadays, I'd say, are written in a combination of HTML, CSS, PHP. PHP is actually the programming language that is the backbone of WordPress. And, you know, so many websites that are not one of the do-it-yourself page builders like Wix or Squarespace are WordPress. Make sure that that company is providing updated um, PHP for their servers. And that might be, you know, not listed in their literature or a little bit technical, but you can just hop in their chat and say, what version of PHP is your server running? And then do a Google search and say, what's the most current version of PHP? So you can see how close that is. And companies, you'd be surprised. Sometimes they're several years out of date. And so certain software won't run or it will run slowly or there'll be security holes. So um, little things like that are important. Uh, something else is space. So are you using that server for uh, storing MP3s. If you aren't, then having a, a, a site um, that's probably 10, 15 pages and some pictures and some audio, I think you're fine with a gig of space. If 
you are storing all of your audio files and auditions and everything on your website, then you want something that's a heck of a lot more or unlimited. Or get a, a secondary cloud server like um, Google Drive and share it from there. Uh, there's a, a few decent hosting companies out there. My favorite by far is uh, Upper Level with Brad Newman. We have hundreds, maybe thousands of people hosted with him at this point, and he checks off all those boxes for me. Uh, there are other companies that we've worked with in the past, and many of them have been bought up by a company called EIG, Endurance International mm. Group. <laughs> and they're one of those oh, wow. conglomerates where yeah. they, they own... We're going to outlast you all. Yes, they <laughs> own Bluehost and iPower and Fat Cow and all that other stuff. Wow. So. Last one real quick, we'll slip in, is from JDK. What are your thoughts on social media links? Um, should they link to the actual site or an external page? Does that uh, make sense? I think maybe the question is, and, and you can um, ask it again, but I, I think the question is, should it link out to that person's social media page or right. just be like a Facebook like button where they stay on the page, you click oh, in. Oh, yeah, and I, think, it, I think that is what he means because that makes, that makes and, sense. And so in general, your goal is to drive people to the place where they're going to hire you, right? So you've already got them on your site. I personally don't want to drive them to social media. If your goal is to continually re-engage with them, then yeah, it's, it's important to, to get them on social media. But how many of them are going to like your page once they actually go to Facebook? They're going to see that their grandmother had um, knitted a new sweater and then they're going to click on that. And, well, actually, maybe that's a bad example. Maybe they're not going to click on that. But they're going to see something that um, distracts them and they're going to go down that rabbit hole that we talked about before. So I would say if you can embed a button that has them like your page, they're now connected to you, and they never leave it. That's ideal. Uh, the alternative is sending them to that page in another tab. So they still have your website open, and they're not going to get too lost. Or if they are, they're going to get reminded where they were a little while ago. And then I think the, the other part of that question was about analytics. Yeah. And so it'd be a good time to maybe take a look at JD's site because he gave us his URL. Yeah, actually, All right. let's do that. Let's okay, do that. great. So, oh, there it is. Son of a gun. So there's oh. JD. It's V O B Y J D dot com. V -O let's just start with that. Is that a good URL? It's, it's a slick. <laughs> yeah, it's a good. But is it a good URL? So if I'm talking to you on the phone and I say, oh, great. So, um, you can check out my site. It's vobyjd.com. Um, <laughs> Will you remember that? Yeah. And do you know what all those letters were? Or do I have to say V as in Victor, B as in boy, um, not A, J as in Joe. So I, I, what I look for in a domain name is short, memorable, easy to spell, no obvious misspellings. And so it's, it checks off the short box for me. It is short. Six, uh, six characters. If you... S said vo by jd.com i think that is more memorable than vo com. so I, I i think the fact that we read it off the screen as a series of letters is um, a little bit of a, a bias against it right but if you're talking to someone you say vo by jd that that's a little bit different yeah vo by jd is i think pretty hard to mis yeah. misinterpret right yeah yeah and the the other factor that i would think about is our you your brand is um, a certain sound or a certain thought your brand so how generic do you want to be uh is it you know a better to invoke a feeling or have your name i i often suggest name vo.com because it's simple and um, then if someone has a brand like the, the home studio master then you incorporate that into the domain yeah keywords in the domain also do play a role in seo it used to be more it's a little bit less now but if SEO is a primary goal of yours, you know, having elearningnarrator.com is going to give you a, a boost over having your name.com. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the site. site. You can look up here. So what I, right off the bat, I see a phone number and email address, which I like. Um, it says voice talent, but that is in an image. So Google can't see those words at the top. Um, there's a, a big image with, I think there are social media icons there, actually. I didn't see that before. Yeah, they're kind but, of cleverly so they're, hidden in there. They look maybe they like... like uh, links. Yeah, there's, there's a Twitter, a LinkedIn, an Instagram, and a Facebook. And those are going to different pages, so yeah. if I click on any of them, it's going to go away. 
Okay. It's another page. So um, <clears throat> it's it's a cute theme. I if your goal is to drive people to them, I probably wouldn't have noticed it unless I was doing an analysis of the site. So it's it's so well themed that I I might have missed it. Uh, there's a a big image at the top which is attention grabbing, but the the demo I, I think it's a it's a big monitor and that's why we can see the demo on a smaller screen or on mobile. My guess is the demo would be below the fold, so I think I would want to pull it up a little bit. Um, it also doesn't look like there's an H1 tag, which is a, a primary heading. So from an SEO perspective, you want to have that. I I think it's it's pretty clear as you scroll down that your demos are right there. There's a video, which I like, and then there's some text for Google to grab onto. And then there's a, a client logo of the AAA. And so I... I, I like you know having a client logo, although I generally wouldn't put just one. So I would, if you don't have a, a lot of high profile clients, you can use some others or wait till you do. But just having one looks like that's, you know, I am the AAA guy or I don't have yeah. enough to fill in the other. And then just at the bottom, the other thing that I would point out is there's no privacy policy. And so um, what is a privacy policy? It's a, generally a page that with a link in the footer by your copyright that says we don't collect personal information or we do this is what we do with it and gdpr which is that european privacy standard that came into effect a couple of years ago um, that if you don't have a privacy policy you're in violation of that so if you have any european clients it can be a problem but also there's a an acronym that google came up with called eat it stands for expertise authoritativeness and trust and those are three very strong things that have a, an impact on SEO. And the trust part of it, part of that is, is the website trustworthy, is the entity trustworthy. What are you doing with my personal information? And so if you don't have a privacy policy, it does not satisfy the, the T in EAT. Oh, so I would, I would add it. But overall, I'd say it's um, definitely one of the better sites that I've looked at. Yeah. Well, we got a lot, we got a number of other questions. We we're a little short on time. I'm sure, and I, of course, I want to stuff your inbox with all sorts of questions. <laughs> Again, if people want to get in touch with you and they've got these questions or they're interested in talking to you over Voice Actor Websites, where do they go? VoiceActorWebsites.com or Joe at VoiceActorWebsites.com. Mm. Makes it easy. All right. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, George. George. All right. It. George and I will be right back to wrap things up right after this. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Show. Hey there. You know, my good friend Harlan Hogan has been out sailing from the coastline of Maine for the last nine days and has had several political spots to record. So with his trusty Portabooth and new MicPort Pro 2L, he tackled them in any reasonably quiet spot, including a large shower room. The audio acts across the board was spectacular. No one had any clue he didn't record in his whisper room, at his home, or and none of his regular clients even noticed any difference. Mark Goodman and Centrance, those guys have got a winner with the new Port Pro. If you're a recording professional, you already know about the original Centrance mic port. That breakthrough audio interface connected any professional microphone to any computer creating professional recordings on the go. It quickly became the go-to AD converter for voice actors, broadcasters, musicians, location, sound recordists, and anyone who wanted state-of-the-art, incredibly small USB connection to their favorite studio-quality mic. From U87s and 416s to, of course, Harlan Hogan's V01A voiceover microphone. And now they're thrilled to introduce the next generation, the MicPort Pro 2L. This thing is amazing, and one of the places you can get it, and the place you should get it, is voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Go on over there, check out the site. Best way to get there, actually, is you go to the bottom of our homepage, click on the picture of Harlan Hogan talking into his illustrious Porto Booth. Porto Booth, he'll kill me now. And go there and buy a MicPort Pro and all the other great stuff he has over at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Arlen.
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Hey, everybody. It's that time of the show where we talk about Source Elements, and they are the creators of Source Connect. Of course, you probably know that. But if you don't and don't know what Source Connect is, you should because this is by far the most popular tool at this point that the commercial studios that are the big budget studios are using to work with voice talent like you all over the world. And this is a software package that runs as its own application. It does not it does not rely on a version of a browser or it doesn't get broken when a browser randomly updates and all the weird things that happens with those browser systems. It's an application and runs on Windows or Mac. Uh, if you want to give it a try and get a trial license going, you should go do that. Go get a demo, source-elements.com. You can just install it on your system and have it ready to go. Get your iLock account set up, get all of everything sorted out, test it out, make sure it works. And then if a client does ask you, hey, do you have Source Connect? You can say, yes, I do. And then go ahead and activate the license. You can buy it or you can do it in a subscription level basis, which I recommend because you get ongoing support when you do that. Anyway, give them a try, source-elements.com. We, we all use them, we love them, and we appreciate their support. We'll be right back to wrap up the show right after this. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. All right, we're back. And uh, our thanks again to Joe Davis for his amazing insight into yeah. this stuff that is just so mysterious. He's dripping information about this oh, stuff. I know. I'm going to have to wipe him off a little bit later. <laughs> that was actually sweat. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> he that was what it was. It too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, next week on the show, Tech Talk number 20. It's coming up. Number 20. And we're going to get to that in a few minutes, too. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but we have donors. We get lots of donors, like... We do, and there's some names like Christy Burns, Joseph Harrison, Michelle Blanker, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Speaks For You, Trey. and Shelly Avellino. All right. Uh, it was great seeing Shelly this weekend at, uh, at WovoCon, and a yeah, lot yeah. of other great people. We had some great people there. Hey, join our mailing list. George is constantly reminding you about that on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> hey, show us your booths. Like this particular booth, that's the actual booth. This is Bruce Burl's booth. Bruce Burl's booth. Booth and, and his and his bedroom. It is a highly functional booth. It is. I especially love the camouflage blanket. <laughs> I know. Do up the whole thing in those, will you? Yeah, really. And then no one will see you. <laughs> but they will hear you, and they'll yeah. hear you good, which is really kind of cool. Uh, yeah, you can send those to the guys at VOBS.TV. In landscape. Not in portrait. Not in portrait. All right. And you want to be in our studio? Write to us again at the guys at VOBS.TV if you're going to be in the mm -hmm. greater Los Angeles area, and we'd love to have you here. Uh, we need to thank our amazing sponsors, like... Alan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. Mm -hmm. Amazing yeah. stuff. And by the way, if you want to find Dan on the web to get his tech support on your stuff, go to... HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. <laughs> and if you want to talk to George about your home studio, you go to George the dot tech. That's where you find me. And if you hate that dot tech thing, George the tech.com works too. That's how I found you. 
Cool. I mean, All right. Works. Not that I was looking for you. I'm like, well, I wonder how I can find George. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for us this week. And uh, again, thanks to Joe Davis. And uh, you can get in touch with him over at voiceactorwebsites.com. So do that. Uh, that's going to do it for now. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Thanks to Sue, our tech director. She did a great job tonight. Take care, guys. Good night.